If you're looking for a new TV in 2021 for your Xbox Series X, then stick around to this video for what I believe are the five best TVs that are going to take your gaming to the next level. Welcome back everybody, my name is Wayne. Thank you so much for being here. And if this is your first time here, I make videos just like this one to simplify your gaming experience. Now, in order to determine what the best gaming TV for your Xbox Series X in 2021 is, we need to know what features it should have. So I've compiled a list of the features that you wanna be looking for when you're looking for your next TV, regardless of which TV it is that you buy. If it's one of the ones that I recommend or if you go find your own TV, you really wanna make sure that at least most of these, if not all of these features are going to be um, at the max that you can get for your TV. Now I'm specifically going to be talking about 4K at 120 Hertz. TVs. Now I'm talking about 4K TVs because you just recently bought your Series X, right? And you want to maximize everything that you can from that system. In order to do that, then you really want to make sure if you're going to buy something new, that you're putting the money towards something that can maximize your system. And that is going to be a 4K TV that can handle at least 120 Hertz because as more and more games come out, they're going to really be able to start taking advantage of those things. And so you want your TV to be able to do that as well. Then when you're looking at your TV, you also want to look at input lag. Now the input lag basically just means when you press a button on your controller, how quickly does it go from your controller to showing up on the actual screen? And a lot of these new gaming TVs that we're going to talk about today have a very low input lag when you have it set into gaming mode. And the next two things that you'll want to check is to see if it has a variable refresh rate and an auto low latency mode. Now the variable refresh rate will make sure whatever refresh rate your system is putting out is going to match that onto the TV. So um, games a lot of times may not just run straight at 120 or straight 60 hertz. Uh, it may jump from 75 to 60, it may go from 120 down to 110 or something like that. And what happens is if your TV has the variable refresh rate, then it's going to match whatever is coming out of the system. And it's going to really help with screen tearing on your game and make sure that your game is always smooth and crisp for you guys. Now the auto low latency mode, what that will do is let's say you're switching from a game and you want to go over to watching a movie on Netflix or something like that. What it does is allows the system to automatically change from the refresh rate that's needed for the gaming modes over to the refresh rates that are needed for the movies and TV shows that you're going to watch. It does that automatically for you. And then lastly, you also want to look what the high dynamic range is. So a lot of TVs these days are going with at least an HDR10 and you wanna make sure that it has at least that or some sort of even better HDR system, which is really going to help in simple terms with how dark your screen is and how bright the screen is and what, what details you can see within those dark or bright areas. All right, and so now that we know what to look for into a TV, let's go ahead and jump right into the TVs that I recommend for your new Xbox Series X. And it seems to be the consensus for the new 2021 model, the LG OLED C1 is going to be your best bet that you can go with if you really want the top of the line gaming TV for your new system. Now this TV does come in currently at the time of making this video at $1,499 on Amazon, uh, but it does check off all of the items that you need. It comes with an input lag of around 12 milliseconds. It also has four, and this one's really important guys, it has four HDMI 2.1 inputs. Now that is really huge because uh, if you're a, a big gamer and not only do you have an Xbox Series X, but maybe you also were able to get a PS5 and now you have two needs for two HDMI 2.1 port you're going to be able to do that and you'll be able to plug in right away and get 4k at 120 hertz and if you know down the road when other things come out needing that 2.1 inputs maybe dvd players or who knows what they'll come out with that are going to need those then you'll have access to do that and just plug them in right away without having to purchase an additional type of uh, receiver to then go into another tv that may only have like one uh, hdmi 2.1 input now it also does check off the hdr 10 box it checks off naturally that is 4k 120 hertz um, and it does have the nvidia g-sync on there for you and it does have the variable refresh rate and the auto low latency mode included on this okay and so one thing you do have to keep in mind as a down side to the OLED models of TVs is that there is the potential issue of screen burning. So if you play the same game nonstop over and over again, like maybe you're playing Call of Duty with the HUD map over there for hours upon hours, you could possibly get a screen burn in of that HUD map, or maybe you're watching the news or something and you got a banner down there nonstop. Again, stuff like that could 
could potentially cause a burn in on your TV. So just keep that in mind when you're when you're looking at these TVs uh, to decide on. Now, the next TV that I'm going to talk about is going to be the Samsung QN90A. Now this TV comes in around $1497, so about the same price. It also pretty much checks off all of the items that you're going to need for your next generation gaming. Naturally, again, it's going to be a 4K at 120 Hertz TV. Uh, based on my research, I found that the input lag is around about 10 milliseconds uh, on this TV, so just a slightly little bit faster than the uh, LG, probably pretty negligible in that case, but uh, it is a slightly faster uh, input lag. It also does come with the VRR and also comes with the ALLM, and it does have the HDR. So the last thing we need to talk about is how many HDMI 2.1 ports it has. And in this case, uh, the specifications state that there are four HDMI ports, and the port number four is going to be your HDMI 2.1 specific port. However, I did watch a video by Stop the FOMO and you can check out the link to his video below if you'd like to see his more in-depth video about this. And what he found was that there are actually all four HDMI 2.1 ports, but there is a slight difference in ports one through three and then four. So four is going to give you a true 2.1 HDMI uh, experience and then at HDR10, right? But ports one through three will also give you the 2.1 experience minus the fact that it's going to be at a maximum of HDR 8 bit, right? So rather than HDR 10, it'll be HDR 8. And so when you go into your settings, you'll need to make sure that you're setting an HDR 8 instead of HDR 10, and that should fix that issue uh, quickly for you. And based on what he was seeing, um, you know, my eyes couldn't really see a huge difference between the video playback and everything on the screen. But again, guys, check out his video. This is not sponsored by him, it's not a collaboration. I just saw his video and I wanted to give him a shout out, and uh, hopefully, maybe you guys will go watch that and get that explanation for him. Now perhaps you're looking for a bigger TV but you still want to stay underneath the budget of about $1,500. If you notice the first two TVs I talked about were also $1,500 or less so perhaps that's the budget you're looking for and you want to stay underneath that but you want a bigger TV than the first two which was a 48 and a 50 inch TV. Well the next TV that I'm going to give you is going to be a 65 inch version TV. Uh, which is only $13.99 right now at the time I'm making this video, and that is the 65-inch LG NanoCell 90. Now, this TV is not going to be an OLED TV like the original LG C1 TV that I mentioned, um, but it is going to be an LED 4K 120Hz TV as well, and you're going to get a bigger size, as I mentioned, at 65 inches rather than a 48-inch TV. This TV does still check off a couple of those boxes that we need. It does have a low input load when it's on game mode, and it also does have two HDMI 2.1 ports rather than the four you'll see on the LG C1, and it is VRR capable and HDR capable as well. But I did not see whether, or I could not confirm whether it had the auto low latency mode based on the research that I was seeing. And lastly, you also could find a smaller version of this. So maybe you have an even tighter budget and you want to keep this around a thousand dollars or less. If you look at last year's models, if you can find one of those, that would be the LG NanoCell 85. It's basically going to tick off of all of these same items, but you can get a smaller TV and last year's 2020 model for less than a thousand dollars if you're looking for one. Now, speaking of saving a little bit more money, if you are still on a little bit of a tighter budget and you want to stick around less than that $1,400, $1,500 range, um, then one of the TVs I would recommend, if you can still find it, is this TV right behind me. This was the TV that I purchased, which is the Samsung Q80T. Now, this TV naturally is going to tick off all of those same things that we talked about as part of the reason why I bought this one. And this is going to give you the low input lag. It's going to give you the variable refresh rate, the auto low latency mode. It's going to check off the HDR10 box. And it also comes with NVIDIA G-Sync. Now, the one downside based on some of the research that I was seeing um, was mentioning something about it's not the best HDR gaming TV. You know, there's not a lot of those out right now. And for my eyes and for what I need, I don't really notice a lot of that. A lot of the games I play are, are kind of fast paced shooters, Call of Duty, the Overwatch, things like that wasn't a huge deal for me. I know if you sit down and you do some very minutia comparisons, you probably will notice those things. But, you know, just for the general gamer, this is probably going to be a great TV if you can find it. I personally really like it and I have no issues with the TV. Now, another TV that you could go with if you don't mind purchasing a 2020 model and you want to save a little bit of more money, uh, and that is going to be the predecessor to the LG C1, and that is the LG CX. This is a 48-inch model that you can find for $1,349 at the time of making this video. It does check off all those boxes. It has a low input lag of 14 milliseconds, 
so a little bit slower than the C1. Uh, it does come with four HDMI 2.1 inputs as well. And it does obviously a 4K 120 Hertz. It does have VRR and ALLM capabilities. And it does have the HDR10. And lastly, it does come with the NVIDIA G-Sync. Now, personally, I'm a really big fan of Samsung TVs and I've had Samsung TVs for a really long time in my household and I've always had really good success with them. So last year when I was looking at TVs, I really struggled between buying this TV and buying the LG CX TV at the time when I, when I was deciding on these. And when it really came down to for me was I really, really liked the LG CX TV, which means the LG C1 was probably gonna be a great buy as well. Uh, but what it came down for me was the fact that I did have uh, Samsung's for a really long time and just kind of brand loyalty, I guess at this point, because I know they work, I know they're good TVs. And so be between that and the fact that the Samsung Q80T was a couple hundred dollars cheaper for me um, when I bought mine, I went ahead and bought this TV. And guys, I really haven't been disappointed at all. It's a great TV to have, it's a great picture. I even bought another one from my gaming business and I even have a Samsung Q70 uh, 65 inch TV in my business as well. So again, guys, I'm, I'm very Samsung biased, but man, guys, that LG TV was amazing and I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these two options. So guys, I hope this really helped you determine which TV that you would like to buy. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. As well, you can find a link to all of these TVs that I listed in the descriptions below. So make sure you check those out if you're interested in one of those TVs. And with that guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.